In this short video, we're going to look at some examples of functions where the limit as x approaches a of f of x does not exist. So we have already seen some examples where if the left limit is different from the right limit, the limit will not exist. In fact, we saw an example with the greatest integer function. So here's another example using the greatest integer function, but this time we're using the greatest integer function of x plus 3. So just for a minute, let's just review what the graph of the greatest integer function looks like. It's a step function. So I know that if I'm looking at the limit as x approaches an integer, I know that if I just take a sample point, which is a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, then I know that the function values are going to be constant within, you know, uh, really until I reach the next integer value. So just by taking some sample points with these greatest integer function questions, I should be able to get a decent answer. So, all right, let's take a sample. I'm going to approach negative two from the left. So I need to have something that's a little bit to the left of negative two. So I think about, uh, well, let's just take, uh, x equal to say negative uh, 2.1. Then x plus 3 would be uh, 0 0.9. And the greatest integer function of 0 0.9 is 0. So coming from the left, no matter how close I get to negative 2, when I add 3 to it, I'm going to get some number which is between 0 and 1, and the greatest integer function of that number is going to be 0. So here we can say that the left limit is 0. The right limit, I have to choose a value of x which is bigger than negative 2, to the right of negative 2. So I don't want to go too far, so let's just take x equals negative 1.9. Now if I add 3 to that, what does that give me? 1.1, right? Just to make sure I understand, yeah, if I take uh, 1.9 and 1.1, that'll give me 3. Great, okay. So the, and the greatest integer value of 1.1 is 1. And so what does this tell me? That tells me that the limit as x approaches negative 2 of the greatest integer function of x plus 3 does not exist. All right. What about the tangent function? Here we're asking a slightly different question. We're saying for what values of a does the limit as x approaches a of tangent of x not exist? So I've tried to sketch down here the graph of y equals tangent of x. Uh, we're going to have a vertical asymptote any time cosine of x equals to 0. So that would be at pi over 2 plus any integer multiple of pi. Uh, cosine will be 0. And so I can see that uh, for those values, uh, when I approach that value from the left, the limit is positive infinity. If I approach it from the right, it's negative infinity. And so this does not exist. The limit as x approaches a of tangent of x does not exist when a is pi over 2 
plus k pi, and k is an integer. All right, here's a different example. I have a function, it's a rational function. Well, it's not quite a rational function because we have the absolute values in it. But it is an algebraic fraction where we have x squared minus nine in the numerator and the absolute value of x minus three in the denominator. To analyze this function, we have to remember some properties of the absolute value. Recall that the absolute value of x would just be x if x is positive or zero, but you'd have to change the sign if x were negative. Just think about that, that if you take the absolute value of negative three, it's going to be three, you change the sign. All right, so that would tell me that the absolute, I'm sorry, that the x squared minus nine over absolute value x minus three, I can write as a piecewise defined function. If x minus three is positive, then the absolute value of x minus three is just x minus three. On the other hand, if x minus three is negative, then I would get the opposite of quantity x minus three equaling the absolute value. So, now I can simplify this statement. This would say that f of x would equal, now let me just remember that I can factor this as x plus three times x minus three. That is, I factored x squared minus nine equals x plus three times x minus three. And so that will simplify. I will just have x plus three if x is greater than three. And here I just said, well, x minus three greater than zero, that really means that x is greater than three. So what happens in the second branch where I have to have the opposite or the minus sign in front of the quantity x minus three? Well, that's just going to change the sign. Now I'm going to have minus x minus three if x is less than three. So really this function, except for when x equals three, where it's not defined, uh, one branch is a line and the other branch is a different line. Now I actually try to use Desmos to graph this and Desmos is a great tool, don't get me wrong. Uh, but every tool has limitations. And so here I tried to graph this function using Desmos and uh, it had problems when x equals three. It started to draw some strange pieces there. So let me go ahead and uh, try to fix that up a little bit here. And uh, I'm just going to write over the that part which we know shouldn't be there. And then I know the function's not defined at three, which is also going to be here, one, two, three. Um, so let me see here. It's x plus three. So there's three, four, five, six. So the whole is going to be at three comma six. There's a hole here. And then one, two, three. So this is negative three, negative four, negative six. So negative three. Oh, this is. Okay, so I don't quite understand what their grid here. But from this, we can see that uh, the limit as x approaches three from the right of 
x squared minus 9 over x minus 3 absolute value is going to be 6. And the uh, limit as x approaches 3 from the left of x squared minus 9 over absolute value x minus 3 equals negative 6. And so here again, for what values of a does this not exist? Uh, that would just be a equals 3. The limit does not exist when a equals 3. If a is not equal to 3, uh, then we're on one of these two branches, which are just lines, and there's no holes or gaps or any concern about left limit or right limit, uh, out except for when x equals 3. All right, so here we have to look at one of the most classic examples of where the function does the function limit does not exist. We're going to try to evaluate the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of pi over x. And so let's just start putting in some values of x. Um, so for example, if I were to put in x equals 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, then pi over x would just be 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. And I could continue this forever. I mean, it could take 1 over a million. I would then get a million pi. But it doesn't matter. Sine of any multiple of pi is going to be 0. So based on those trials, it looks like I can get as close as I want to 0. And then sine of that value is going to get be 0. So maybe the limit is 0. Well, let's take something that's a little bit more uh, complicated, but also is going to get as, as close to 0 as we want. So let's take x values 2 thirds, 2 seventh, 2 eleventh. What am I doing? I'm just keeping the numerator as 2. The denominator is being increased by 4. Why would I choose that strange set of x values. Well, it goes back to once I take the reciprocal, uh, I'll get 3 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 11 pi over 2 for pi over x. And what's special about those? Well, it's 3 pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi, 3 pi over 2 plus 4 pi, would be 3 pi over 2 plus 6 pi would be my next one if I wanted to use, say, 2 over, what would I do, 15 here, right? I would get 15 pi over 2, which is just going to be 3 pi over 2 plus 6 pi. And so, Sorry. In any case, then, if I take sine of 3 pi over 2, sine of 3 pi over 2 is not. Oh, yes, it is. Sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. And if I add 2 pi to that, I'm still going to get negative 1. If I add 4 pi, I'll still get negative 1. If I add 6 pi, I'll still have negative 1. So it looks like, wait a minute, I can get as close as I want to 0. And sometimes my function value is 0. And sometimes my function value is negative 1. What's going on? Well, let's take a look at the graph here. So if I take a look at sine of pi over x, what happens as I get closer to 0 is that I'm still going between negative 1 and 1, but I go faster in the sense my frequency is increasing infinitely. And so uh, it doesn't really matter how much I zoom in. There's still just these infinite oscillations. And so I can always find 
no matter how close I want to get to zero, I can always find any number between zero and one, an x value, which will give me any number between zero and one for my output of sine of pi over x. So this infinite oscillation tells me that this limit does not exist. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video about some examples where the limit does not exist.